welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. This is the week that was. And it has actually been a couple weeks since I gave you guys an update, so I'll be covering a couple weeks here. And lots of great things happened. One thing that happened actually was not on YouTube, it happened on Twitter and Facebook. I suppose this is a bit of a writing update. Now, <laughs> I was very excited that uh, Mark Lawrence uh, put out a tweet and also a post on Facebook about the fact that he has agreed to read my first novel, the first novel in my trilogy. And I was absolutely thrilled that he would want to advertise the fact. Uh, so yes, he put out a, a tweet and a post on Facebook indicating that he has agreed very graciously, I might add myself, uh, <laughs> to uh, read my book in order to uh, perhaps, if he likes it enough, write an endorsement of my book. And this is part of my efforts, uh, along with my agent, to uh, find a publisher for my trilogy. So this is a, a writing update. I have approached several other authors as well uh, to request that they read my book and write a little blurb, like the sort of thing that you might find on the back of a book or on the dust jacket. Uh, endorsing the book. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, hopefully, will help to convince a publisher. Uh, yeah, so it's something I'm very excited about. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's actually really nerve-wracking approaching your literary heroes to ask them, will you please read my book uh, and uh, possibly write something nice about it? <laughs> so uh, it was absolutely uh, wonderful of Mark Lawrence to to be willing to um, put out that tweet, uh, which is just, uh, and, and the, the post on Facebook. Uh, uh, and the other authors I'm, uh, I've asked are also my heroes, uh, just like Mark Lawrence. Uh, so I'm, I'm really, really, uh, actually one of them has already uh, written the blurb. Uh, so I do have one blurb already written and I'm delighted with what that particular author had to say. Uh, perhaps I'll share that with you at some point if I think that's okay to do. <laughs> I haven't asked permission yet, uh, but that is something that hopefully one day will appear on my book when it's published, uh, so we shall see. But uh, wow, uh, it's, it's a really exciting part of the process for me, and it is uh, just another step along the journey to finding a publisher for my trilogy. Uh, which I've been working on. I've said to you guys many times before for a long time, <laughs> on and off for about the last 18 years or so. So yeah, it's, it's been a long journey and it feels like, feels like I'm getting closer to that point of uh, finding a publisher at least. So yeah, um, I'm very excited about that. And on the channel, I had some great stuff happen as well. I was a, uh, I had a great time hosting Sarah from Sarah Reads for Dear Dr. Fantasy. It was a wonderful discussion with her. Uh, she is someone that I've been on in several collaborations with, but had not had the chance to talk with one-on-one -on -one before. And it really is a slightly different dynamic when it's just the two of you chatting about whatever happens to come up. So it was a great time. We talked about a lot of our favorite books, a lot of our favorite fellow booktubers. And uh, we talked about being parents and uh, other things. So it's great to see what you have in common with people. Um, besides the books, of course, so the, it's really largely about the books uh, that we love, but uh, other things do come up, and that's the beauty of those informal discussions. So we had a great time with that, and uh, I got some great comments on that discussion. I also put out a review of The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. It is a book that I actually really enjoyed. I did, wasn't sure what to think because I had heard people that I admire and respect uh, on both sides of kind of enjoying or maybe not or having it um, not quite meet expectations or exceeding expectations. So I was kind of neutral going into it and really enjoyed myself a lot. So it is something that I would definitely recommend if you're interested in a, a really fun setting. Obviously, Chakraborty's done some great research, knows her stuff, and is a very capable writer. Uh, so I enjoyed her character work and the world building and the lore and everything else. Uh, just uh, a thumbs up for me. And I will eventually, I don't know when, but I will eventually read the second and third book in the David Bod trilogy uh, to follow up on that. Uh, so certainly, at least for my own enjoyment. 
And I also released an, an apology of sorts <laughs> to Jimmy, to Jimmy Nuts. Uh, I had a little bit of fun making a video in which I uh, might have gotten myself into a wee bit of trouble with <laughs> some of my <laughs> fellow booktubers. I think it was all in, in good fun. Uh, but uh, yes, it, it's, uh, it was uh, my attempt at humor and some folks appear to enjoy it. Uh, so I'm glad that I had, I had a bit of a lighthearted moment there with my apology to Jimmy. And it was something that stemmed from the ICFA event, the uh, conference uh, that uh, Jimmy and Alan and Joanna and AP and I attended. Uh, and uh, we also met up with Steven Erickson there, among others. Um, but uh, we've had this, uh, this narrative evolving from that event. So, <laughs> and uh, it, the, to get the full thing, I think you'd, you'd have to watch the, uh, the, the second video that I released from ICFA, as well as the Charity Jeopardy. Um, and then, of course, I followed up with this little fun video. Uh, and I had some, I think, some good visuals in that video <laughs> that, was, that, that supported my, my, my story, of course, uh, because uh, I needed to clear the air. I needed to reveal who was behind all the, the dastardly deeds that led to poor Jimmy being smacked on the back of the head with an alligator. So, uh, yes, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think, at least it was for me. Uh, and uh, elsewhere, I was in a chat on uh, Steve's channel, Steve Talks Books, on uh, Dead House Gates. That was a lot of fun for me. I really enjoyed going back to those earlier Malazan books and seeing what some of my other friends uh, who are reading the series now think about it uh, here on BookTube. And so Steve has been very gracious about inviting me to partake in that discussion along with uh, Yolene and Ursi and Layla and Joseph. And Joseph, by the way, has started his very own BookTube channel. So that is something to check out. I think it is called J.R. Carroll. Uh, so yeah, Joseph is out there now uh, on his own channel. And uh, also Stacy, who was in our first discussion, was in the chat. Uh, and I really enjoyed talking to Stacy uh, during the first discussion. So I hope that she'll be back uh, for Memories of Ice. Uh, but she was definitely contributing in the chat, as were many other people. So that was a lot of fun for me um, and a great discussion. And, of course, I mentioned Charity Jeopardy. That is another thing I was involved in. And that went... <laughs> I, I think it went beautifully, actually. Uh, so in terms of the cause, uh, which was uh, donating money toward uh, Doctors Without Borders and specifically to help with efforts to aid people over in Ukraine. And I believe that uh, a lot of generous folks were out there. Uh, they, uh, it was a success, a huge success in terms of raising money for that very worthy cause. And also I came in second place uh, behind a bona fide uh, Jeopardy champion in, in Igor, who he cleaned up. I mean, I, of course it wasn't, wasn't really very close. Uh, he was way ahead. And to be truthful, Alan was in second place most of the time until he blew everything uh, by betting everything on a uh, whatever that's called, double jeopardy thingy, whatever, where he puts down all his money. And uh, he didn't have to, but he was trying to get ahead, I think. And, and it sort of backfired, but we had a lot of fun. Uh, it was a blast. <laughs> At least I had a lot of fun. Poor Alan. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was great. It was my very first time participating in Jeopardy here on BookTube, and I'm not sure if anyone wants me back, but I am willing to come back and, and uh, probably improve on my performance a little bit because I really didn't even know the basic rules. I didn't know how the buzzer thing worked. Uh, so I learned a lot. I'm always learning. That's what I'm all about, folks. So it was a lot of fun. And I also got a bit of a roasting from my nemesis. Professor Fireballs, uh, I had to put out quite a few little fires on my tweed whilst listening to the pre-show, <laughs> which was put together beautifully. I have to really give uh, uh, a, um, a hand to Sarah and Jimmy and Igor and all the folks who contributed to the pre-show. It was absolutely brilliant. Yes, even Professor Fireballs did a, he did a good job, so I must say. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was really a quite, quite a lot of fun to see all that put together and to participate in the event itself. Uh, what a great success. What a wonderful, uh, coming together of all kinds of people 
on booktube so all, all the categories were introduced by a lot of my fellow booktubers some great people some friends and uh the uh the questions were <laughs> a bit daunting at times but uh it was fun when i got one right uh did happen occasionally so and i did get the final question correct i was the only one to get the final question uh so that was exciting at least yeah so a lot of fun lots of fun if you haven't seen the charity jeopardy i highly recommend both the pre-show and the jeopardy itself and uh, what a great cause what a what a wonderful coming together i think it was a really a testament to the uh the love our community has uh and so it was really something that i'm very very grateful to have been part of um so yeah um and what else uh, what am i reading now well let's see here i have finished the fourth book in the lpq in the uh the long price quartet and uh, that is of course the Price of Spring, and it was such a tremendous read. Such a, um, wow, I mean, this, ser this series is uh, everything that was sold to me and more. Uh, I even had to text Alan when I finished The Price of Spring. After I dried my eyes, I texted Alan to tell him that uh, I was very grateful for him pitching this series to me and to the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was right. Alan was absolutely right uh, about the beauty of this series. Really wonderful stuff. I am going to put out my own, not just review of The Price of Spring, but a kind of, I'm not sure what to call it yet, but a kind of why I love the Long Price Quartet or why you should read sort of thing uh, about the entire series uh, along with a review of book four. But And then of course, I'll be having a discussion with the usual gang uh, and this will be on my channel. I suppose it'll be a live stream. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to get the courage to do my second live stream. Uh, I think I can handle it, especially since I will be hosting, and Alan and Sarah and uh, Nico and Andrew and hopefully Zara this time will be uh, participating in the discussion, and I will be relying on them to say brilliant things as I handle the comments in the chat. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that very much, uh, to talking spoilers when I discuss The Price of Spring with them. But I also think I'd like to make the discussion with, with them be a kind of, in the beginning at least, spoiler-free thing where we, we sort of sell the series and explain why we love it. Because I think everybody involved uh, really has been tremendously impressed with the Long Price Quartet. Um, so yeah, um, absolutely brilliant stuff by Daniel Abraham. I highly recommend the series. Um, and then I will be reading, I actually am reading, The Hunger of the Gods. This is, this is like coming home now. You know, reading a John Gwynne book after reading The Faithful and the Fallen and Of Blood and Bone, and of course reading book one of the Bloodsworn trilogy, uh, the Shadow of the Gods now coming into, back to uh, the Bloodsworn trilogy with The Hunger of the Gods. It feels like coming home. I am really happy to be reading a Gwyn book again. And I have said it many times, but I'll say it again. I love the fact that Gwyn takes inspiration from the sagas, from the Old Norse material, uh, and makes it his own. And has given us a modern fantasy series that is just so solidly based in Old Norse that I am just, uh, it, it's, it's beautiful for me. It is right in my wheelhouse. Everything, my, my greatest passions are right here in this book. So uh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm enjoying myself tremendously. And I will be putting out a review of Hunger of the Gods. And there will be another uh, group discussion. Uh, last year when The Shadow of the Gods came out, there was a discussion on my channel uh, with a with a war band, and uh, we are hoping to get those people together again for a discussion on the hunger of the gods. So I've been talking with Patrick and some of the others about that, so I'm pretty sure that is going to happen. And then I have a couple other reads. Uh, one is gonna be uh, probably a real quickie. I bet I could get this done in a day. Uh, and that is Michael Crichton's Eaters of the Dead. This is something I'm going to be chatting about with Mike from Mike's Book Reviews. And uh, it was part of a, an offshoot of our Beowulf discussion that happened on his channel. 
And uh, I'm looking forward to this very much. Michael Crichton was inspired or, uh, in part by Beowulf to write this, Leaders of the Dead. And, um, and also Ibn Fadlan's journal of his uh, encounters with, uh, with the Scandinavian people. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what Michael Crichton made of all of that here. I have seen the film The Thirteenth Warrior, which is based on the book Leaders of the Dead. So I have a pretty good idea of what to expect. Um, but... Uh, of course, the film is never quite the same as the book, so I'm eager to see. And this will be my very first read of a Michael Crichton book as well, so a new author for me. And it'll be fun to discuss it with Mike, who is very well read when it comes to Michael Crichton. He's another of, of Mike's favorites, um, so that'll be fun. Speaking of Mike's favorites, I will also be reading in the very near future Wolves of the Kala, book five of the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. Uh, and this is I'm very excited for it. I am in, I'm in loving this series, The Dark Tower, and I think there will be some more discussions with some of my fellow booktubers. I had a discussion on my channel of the first three books of Dark Tower, and that included Chaz and Mike and Sarah, and that is something I'm hoping will happen again. We have not quite arranged it yet, but uh, at certain points, I'm not sure if maybe when we're all done with this series, because Mike is also reading through Dark Tower now, um, and we're probably going to be pretty close to coinciding when it terms of, comes to, to uh, finishing the series. So I'm excited. So uh, yeah, that, that is going to be uh, a great time as well, whether we get together after maybe the Wolves of the Kala or maybe when we're all done with the, uh, with the Dark Tower series. We shall see. Uh, but uh, something will happen uh, Dark Tower-wise, I am sure. And what else is going on? Well, let's see. Upcoming, I am going to be, actually, while you're watching this, there's a good chance I will be chatting with none other than Ruth and Bad, the cipher of Malaz Tube. And uh, he is going to be my next guest for Dear Dr. Fantasy. So that discussion will be out on Tuesday. And I have a, a surprise or two uh, in store for Ruth and Bad, and I am very excited to talk to him about not only... Malaz and stuff, but fantasy in general, and uh, perhaps literature in a broader sense. We shall see. I mean, he's an incredibly smart guy. And so uh, I, I'm curious to see where the conversation will wander. But uh, I am very excited to be talking to him. And I also have a, a, several more uh, Dear Dr. Fantasy episodes lined up. I will be talking with Raph Blue Text, for example, and Library of a Viking. And I'm approaching some other people as well. Uh, I don't have dates yet for the others, but I do have dates for those two. So I can announce that they will be coming on. And uh, what else is going on here? Um, yeah, I mentioned I'll be uh, releasing after Tuesday. I'll have the Dear Dr. Fantasy out. And then on Thursday, I'll have my review, uh, my own review of Price of Spring, plus a Why Read, the, the Long Price Quartet. And uh, later on, I'll be in a chat uh, with Fina on her channel, along with Chaz and Joanna. And that is going to be uh, a, a discussion, uh, broadly speaking, on diversity in, in fantasy. But uh, uh, Fina will be in charge of that, and I think it's going to be a really interesting discussion. So I'll, I'll uh, start talking about that more as we get closer to that day. Um, as well. But yeah, so lots of more and more discussions lined up as well, but uh, I think I'll be announcing them later <laughs> because uh, they're a little further away. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. Lots of fun people, lots of great people to talk to here on BookTube. And I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens with these reads and, and these discussions. So, well, thank you so much for stopping by for this episode of The Week That Was. And until next time. <laughs>